This is an old Dell Optiplex 7010 given to me from an office being cleared out. Being released in 2012, we can expect it's had a lot of use and wear on it through the use of crunching numbers and typing up documents and doing emails and all sorts of office work. Dell's Optiplex line of computers is targeted towards businesses as being compact and reliable machines, and there is a massive abundance of them in the world since so many offices are retiring these surprisingly useful machines, meaning it's extremely easy to purchase one of these for yourself from eBay or other sites. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can refurbish and upgrade one of these machines to be used as a great personal computer or to sell it on eBay like so many others are doing. However, before that, I'd like to show you around the machine so you can see what sort of I.O. it has to offer. On the front you'll find two USB 2 and two USB 3 ports, headphone and microphone jacks, and a slim DVD writer. There's also a speaker hidden behind the ventilated front. On the back you'll find a standard IEC C13 power connector, audio out jack, combined microphone line in jack, six USB 2 ports, gigabit ethernet, two display ports, VGA, RS-232 serial, and two PS2 mouse and keyboard connectors if you're still using peripherals from the late 90s. There's also low profile PCI brackets if you have any extras in your machine like a discrete GPU. Opening the machine is as easy as pulling up on the latch and lifting the lid off, revealing the innards of the Optiplex. After this, I suggest blowing the dust out of the system outdoors using either compressed air or a trusty balloon pump like how I am using. You can see just how much dust flies out of the PC, dust which otherwise would have made your hands dirty. I do strongly suggest people use pumps like these or electric dust blowers instead of compressed air cans since those just release refrigerants into the atmosphere which really isn't great. After that you can disconnect power and SATA connections to the optical disk drive and pull the tab with the blue sticker back and upwards to remove the drive. Then you can remove the same connections from the hard drive which is situated under where the optical drive would be. Next to the hard drive bay is a blue retention mechanism. Push it so the metal pin is in the larger hole marked with an unlocked padlock. Then you can lift up on the drive bay making sure the retention mechanism doesn't catch on any wires. Now we can see the rest of the insides including the memory modules. If you would like to change or upgrade the hard drive in the system, you can remove the hard drive by pressing in the blue catches on the side and pulling outwards. Then you can remove the hard drive from the caddy by pulling on one side gently to pull the metal pins out of the hard drive. Putting a new hard drive in is the same process but in reverse as is demonstrated here. For this machine I won't change any parts but I'll just be changing them in the video for demonstrational purposes. If you want to add or change the memory in the system, press down the clips holding in the memory modules on each side and pull the sticks out gently. To replace or add more memory modules in the system, open the clips needed for the sticks of memory, Line up the notch in the edge connector with the one in the dim slot and press the stick into the slot using as much pressure as you are comfortable with until you hear a click from each clip. Again, this memory change in the video is just for demonstrative purposes. If you would also like to clean the front panel, you can do so by unclipping the panel on the edge of the case and pulling it off, where you can then clean the panel using an old toothbrush or with water. If you use water, make sure you let it dry completely before reinstalling the panel. You may also want to clean the intake fan. This can be done by pushing the rubber mounting pieces into the larger holes in the chassis, as shown in the video, which will loosen the fan. The connector for the fan is located next to the power supply and needs to be disconnected, as well as the cable being unhooked from the cable management clip on the blue shroud. The fan can be cleaned using an old toothbrush to get rid of the dust. The panel can be reinstalled by aligning plastic clips on the bottom side and clipping it back in at the top. If you wish to replace the thermal paste in the system, or replace the processor, disconnect the blower fan and unscrew the cooler assembly, alternating between different screws to keep pressure on the processor as even as possible. You can then lift up on the assembly to remove it from the system. This gives us a good opportunity to more deeply clean the heatsink. To remove the processor for cleaning and or replacement, pull the retention lever outwards gently and lift it to open the socket. Then, carefully lift the processor out of the socket, making sure to not bend the pins of the socket by dropping the CPU. 
This CPU is an Intel Core i5-3470, a processor that in my opinion has aged incredibly well. To clean the thermal paste off the CPU, use some tissue paper to take off the bulk of the thermal paste and follow it up with either tissue with isopropyl alcohol or alcohol wipes as I will be using. This will remove any residual thermal paste allowing for a clean surface for new paste. A similar process is done to the contact area on the cooler, where paste can be removed with tissues and alcohol. However, it may be challenging to remove thermal paste from the gap between the heat pipes and the aluminium block. You can scrape the stuck paste out with your thumbnail or with a toothbrush pressed into a tissue. You can then blast the dust out of the heatsink using whatever preferred method of dust blowing you have. You can also blow dust out of the exhaust of the fan similarly. If you want to deep clean the fan, you can do so by unscrewing it from the aluminium block, opening it with the clips on the sides of the fan, and brushing it out similarly to the other fan. To reinstall the processor or install a new processor, make sure the top section of the socket is open completely and make note of the gold triangle on the corner of the processor. This lines up with a marking on the motherboard to ensure proper installation of the processor. The processor can be held above the socket and gently placed into the socket and it should fall into place. Then, lower the retainer making sure the tip goes under the head of the screw on the bottom of the socket. You can lower the retention lever slowly and tuck it under the protrusion from the retainer as it was originally. Add some fresh thermal paste onto the processor, about the size of a pea. I am adding a slight excess of thermal paste because of the gaps in the core plate of the cooler, so they can be filled with fresh thermal paste. I am using generic GD900 thermal paste which performs similarly to Arctic MX4 but dries up a bit quicker. Next, install the cooler by inserting the blower into the case and aligning the plastic pins on the blower with the gaps in the back of the case where the vent is. Then lower the cooler into the processor and align the screws with their corresponding holes. Tighten the screws similarly to how they were loosened, alternating between different screws to keep pressure even on the processor as it is installed. Replace the drive bay into the chassis by aligning the two holes on the side with their corresponding pins, and lower the bay into the case, pulling back any cables that could get in the way. Then, lock the drive bay by pushing the blue retention mechanism to align the metal pin with the embossed lock. Reconnect the power and SATA connectors to the hard drive, and insert the optical drive into its section by dropping it into the bay about a centimetre away from the front panel of the computer and pushing it forwards to lock it in place. Then connect its corresponding cables. Be aware that the power cable can sometimes be tricky to find and it is a small connector with thin red and black wires. Finally, you can replace the cover for the computer by aligning the metal tabs on the cover with their corresponding holes in the chassis on the side where the power supply is. Then you can push the cover down firmly and it will click into place. And now you've cleaned out, refurbished, and maybe even upgraded your Dell Optiplex 7010. Pat yourself on the back. Now you can install whatever operating system you like, and you can use the system for whatever you want. Thank you for watching. Like the video if you thought it was helpful, and maybe even subscribe if you enjoy my very loosely related content. I'll see you all next time.